Hello, Heart to Home Fellowship. It's me again, Michael. And today we're going to be in uh, Psalms 51. The subject we're going to be talking about is true repentance. But before we get started, let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for uh, whatever time this is that uh, they're tuning in, that you just speak to us and that uh, you show yourself through your word and show us what it is like and what true repentance really means and what it looks like. Give us an example. Thank you. And continue to work in our lives every day. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we'll be starting off in verse 1. It says, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. This is uh, David and... Uh, I forgot to go back to the foreground where it lays out uh, who's writing this and that's in the very beginning and saying to the chief musician a psalm of David when Nathan the prophet went to him after he had gone into Bathsheba so this is right after the incident with uh, David taking Uriah's uh, wife and for his own and killing him uh, on the battlefield and he's we see at this point now Nathan's come to him and he's uh, showed him truly what uh, David had done and how how terrible that was and he's repentant we see his repentant heart and he throughout this chapter shows his true repentance uh, through his uh, prayer to the Lord and uh, it says in verse 3 for I acknowledge my transgression and my sin is always before me against you you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight, that you may be found just when you speak, and blameless when you judge. So he recognizes his sin, he recognizes what he's done wrong, and that he's not sinned against man, but truly he's sinned against God, and God only. It's such a big transgression, it's not, it, any sin we do is not against our fellow brethren, sure, yes, it is. Uh, it does affect others, but truly who we are sinning against in all reality is the Lord. And we should keep that at the forefront of our minds as we go through our daily lives. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in my sin my mother conceived me. Behold, you desire truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part you will make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me hear joy and gladness, that the bones you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Yet again, uh, in that phrase where it says, "You have broken uh, the bones you have broken may rejoice. He recognizes that he has been broken, and he has brought this upon himself, yet he does recognize that the Lord is using it to grow him further. And he is repentant and he's asking for a complete, complete cleansing of his heart and of his soul. Uh, not just a rejuvenation, but a complete wipe and reconstitution. Uh, Verse 10, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. The word create literally means to create from nothing. He's not just asking for a rejuvenation of his past self, but rather a complete creation in the Lord for the Lord to recreate his heart to be like, his own, like the Lord's. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me by your generous spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners shall be converted to you. So right here is me, he's making a pledge to the Lord that he's not just going to let this go to waste. He, rather than just repenting, he's actually, he's ready to do the work. He's ready to go forth and sh uh, show others what the Lord has done for him. That he's not just repentant and going to stay in the same spot. He's moving forward. He's going to teach others n the ways not, not to do the same things he's done. It's such a great reminder to us that we don't need to stay in the same spot. We've repented and we're ready to move forward. The Lord will use us. He's ready to use us. We're not to be complacent. 
Verse 14, deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, O God, the God of my salvation, and my, the, and my tongue shall sing aloud of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall show forth your praise. For you do not desire sacrifice, or else I would give it. You do not delight in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. These, O God, you will not despise. So he recognizes that it's not things he can do that's going to save him. He can't bring a bunch of sacrifices to the Lord and that's going to save him from what he's done. He recognizes that it's not truly what he can do that will bring upon the Lord's blessing. Rather, it's a broken and contrite heart. And the word contrite heart means to be uh, recognized in such emotional state that you've done something wrong and it's brought upon by guilt. And he recognizes that. He's guilty and he knows he's guilty. And he's repentant. And he's also ready to shout and praise the Lord. And that's truly a significant thing. Repentance includes praise and wonder and glory. The glory of the Lord. You glory after his name. You're excited to see what the Lord has done and what he's doing. Even though you know you've done what you've done is wrong. Do good in your good pleasures to Zion. Build the walls of Jerusalem. Then you shall be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness, with burnt offering and whole burnt offering. Then they shall offer bulls on your altar. So he recognizes that it's not the act, but the heart in doing the act. He's uh, recognizing that it's not just offering these burnt offerings that's going to save him, but that he recognizes what he's done is wrong, and he's offering these burnt offerings with a broken and contrite heart to the Lord, and asking for repentance, true repentance. This is back in the old days when we didn't have Jesus, but Jesus was our sacrifice. We have his sacrifice on the cross, and he died and he, ra he raised from again from the dead. And he's coming back to prepare, he's, he's gone to prepare a place for us, and he's coming back. We just have, need to have a contrite heart. And it doesn't matter what it is, what you're going through in your daily life, maybe it's simple things you just don't know how you can get over it. Something, someone's done something to you and you don't know how to forgive them. You've done something to someone and you don't know how they'll ever forgive you. Well, we, as we see here today, it's not what you can do for others, what you can do for the Lord. It's your heart and your stance with Him. Are you ready to repent? Or are you holding on to your past guilt and transgressions? Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this time we've spent growing closer to you and learning what it truly does mean to be repentant. Lord, no matter what it is that we may be going through, remind us that you are ready and willing to forgive if we just may ask. Lord, we love you and we re recognize that you love us first. Thank you for all that you have and will continue to do. In Jesus' name.